be looking at Kubica, which is the technique of assembling small pieces of wood without the need of nails. So it's probably used for Sochi doors and decorative pieces and it's been around since the first century. Jason from Little Garage Workshop has set this challenge called Blooming Good With Wood. Now the idea is to make a planter and there's some excellent prizes out there. Go and check him out on his Instagram page. I shall leave a link in the description down below. Now Kumiko had been on my goal list for this year to give it a go because I've always been interested in it. And I thought this was a great opportunity to put the two projects together. The first thing I did was get this book, The Art of Kumiko. It's about £15 from Matt Kenny on Amazon. Brilliant little book. Watched a few YouTubes and decided let's go for it. So a lot of people when doing the cover code do indeed set it up with a cross cut sled on the table saw but I've decided I want to cut everything by hand. So you do need a few little jigs to start with. You need a 45, a 22 and a half degree and also a 67 and a half degree. Now these will cover the jigs we need for these particular patterns that we are doing. Um, now I watched a video by John McGrath on YouTube on how to make these, very simple to do. I'll leave a link again to that video down below. Now with cutting it all by hand you will need a fine saw. You don't necessarily need to have a Japanese pull saw but indeed a dovetail saw would also do the trick absolutely fine. Block plane, you need a nice wide chisel for doing the paring and also because you need to be able to You'll see in a bit, you'll need a cut one. I actually got an old 6mm chisel and ground it down to make it only 3mm wide. Of course, you could go and buy a 3 or 4mm chisel. So, the next thing I've done is I made this little box. And the idea is, we'll have a story stick, which we'll mark out in a minute for the patterns. You put all your Kumiko strips in between, and then you cut in every single Kumiko strip at exactly the same time. I also did a little saddle square to put over the top just as an extra guide to make sure that I'm perfectly square every time. So, a couple of coast strips are normally from basswood I believe or lime wood, a slightly softer material. Um, I didn't have any available so I've just run these strips on the table saw at 4mm. Now I've done these out of European oak and I did a bunch of them and sanded them down so they're ready for using. So next up is the design. So the planter will just be a basic box shape and we're going to have Kumiko on either end and a panel of three on the main face. Now on the ends I am going to do what they call the Ashinoha which is also known as the hemp leaf which is a very popular pattern. So this will be on the ends and also in the centre of the main panel. On either side I'm going to do what they called hashtags. Like any project you start off with doing a plan. So I've done this plan and it details the pattern that I'm doing and it also shows me the measurement, I worked out all the measurements for what I need for all the uprights to be done. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a story stick on one of these pieces for the cutting jig. Now the verticals and the uprights are actually cut in exactly the same spaces. So for this particular design, I think I needed 12 pieces. It's 11 pieces. <laughs> so we'll take 11 pieces. And then what you do is you use this other piece to clamp them all together so as you cut them every single one will be identically the same and if you wanted to you could also put a bit of tape around the pieces to ensure that nothing's moving from the reference fence these are all going to cut on half lap joints so what i'll also do is I'll mark a halfway point on both pieces so i've got something else visual aid for the saw to go to
Now all we need to do is use this saddle square, pull it up to the, the mark that we've done on the story stick and we cut through it to the half lap and we do this all the way along the piece. A little good little tip is when you're starting, if you just angle the saw ever so slightly towards the base of the saddle square, just for a couple of cuts, it'll help you get nice and close to the saddle square. Because I've done my Kumiko strips at 4mm, which you know is a lot thicker than normally they, they do, this is where the little 3 4mm chisel comes in. Because now what we do with all these cutouts that we've made, we're just going to go across and par across using these lines for a guide again, and that will give us all the half lap joints. As you've cut each one, just check it with another little off cut to make sure that it is going to go in nicely. I mean that's a nice tight fit. So I'll just go ahead now, I'll get the rest of these slots parred out. So next up we can take this out and then we'll cut six of them in half for the vertical pieces. So the idea of Comico is it is actually all push fit, but you can also use a little bit of glue if you want to on the half lap joints just to make sure that it stays solid and it doesn't move after the fact. So there we have it, we have the full frame. I did go around and trim off the pieces, the edge pieces, just so it wasn't poking me in the neck or anything. So first off, we're going to do the Asinoha. So to do this, we need to measure the diagonals, because they're the first pieces to go in. And that gives us 56 millimetres for this size square. So we're going to take our 45 millimetre jig. We're going to measure it in the throat here and set that at 56 millimetres. Then what we'll do is we'll take one of our little pieces. I've cut these two just being a little bit long for ease. You put it in, you par the side, you flick it over, we par the other side, 180 degrees and do the same process on the other side so we've got a point on either edge of the piece. And of course you want to do a test fit. actually a, a fraction too short so we just increase the size and just dial it in until you get the right size. So once you've got your pieces dialed into the size you need go on and batch out as many as you need for however you need for the piece we're doing. Obviously in this case it was just the four so the next up we always do is just click into place on the diagonals. So there you go, we've got the main bit in on the square. The next up is the hinge pieces, they are a little bit more tricky. So for this we need our 67 and a half degree jig. Now we do the joint, so it's two thirds and one third. So you go ahead and put a 67 and a half on, the on one side, which is two thirds of the depth and just a one third there. Now to work out how long it actually is, we place it into the Kumiko triangle like so. You take a ruler, and put it across the diagonal on the corner and then this will give us once that's nice and tight there that will give us a center point there of the actual length and then what we do is we set up our 22 and a half degree jig at the correct length so that point is in the middle and you need 22 and a half degrees on each side and again, this can take a little bit of fine tuning just to dial in the actual length that we need. So 
So there you have it. As you can actually see, the points meet exactly on the diagonal. So now you want to go ahead and batch out however many you need. So for this particular one we need 16. So I'm going to go ahead now and make another 14 while the jigs are set up. So the next piece we need to do is the locking piece for the two hinge pieces. Now this is just simply a piece with a 45 degree bevel on either side giving a little point on either edge of it. And it's just the same thing using the 45 degree jig. We just need to get the correct length and just dial it in bit by bit until you get it. And then once you've got the correct length, it's just literally a case of your two hinge pieces here. This piece will just then just slide into place like so. Then we can go ahead now and we can fit all the other pieces to the leaf pattern. the other thing you can do is you could use a very fine spatula and put a drop of some, something like tight bone glue as you're gluing it if you want to glue it into place. There we have it, the Asi Noha is now done. I know it's not perfect but I'll put a little bit of filler in it because it is indeed being painted and finished with Rubio Monocoat Wood Cream. So that's it for this one, we will look at the hashtag in the next part and we'll also get the planter finally put together. Thanks for watching.